This corresponds to two parameters in the deployment called max unavailable and max surge. Max unavailable, I hope that one is self-explanatory. It indicates how many pods can we um, shut down? How, how many pods are we comfortable having unavailable uh, in the deployment? Uh, by default, for both parameters, it's 25%. So if you have a deployment of size 10, max available 25%, it means I can lose up to 25% of the capacity. 25% of 10, that's 2.5. Rounded down, it means I can lose two pods. And yep, that's exactly what's going on. That's why we have eight. And so that's why, um, remember when I said, oh, we have a little drop in performance, uh, that was the 20% drop in performance. Max surge, that's the other way around. Max surge indicates uh, how much extra resource we can use during the running update. So if you put, for instance, uh, max surge 25%, uh, that one's going to be rounded up, if I remember correctly. So that means that during, uh, if you have a deployment of size 10, during the rolling update, you can have up to three extra pods to do that rolling update. For these parameters, you, you can have values either as a percentage or as an absolute number of pods. So 20%, 50%, 100%, or 3, 5, 7, 20 pods. Couple of examples of strategies. Um, if you don't want to lose any capacity during the rolling update, you can put max unavailable zero. Um, if you want your rolling update to be really fast, you could put max surge 100%. Max surge 100%, that means that when you start the rolling update, it's going to create all the new pods like right away, immediately. So your deployment, like I mean, your rolling update will be really fast, but it's going to use a lot of extra resources. So if it's a deployment with like three pods, you don't care. But if it's a deployment like the, the Doctolib API that I was mentioning earlier with thousands of pods, when you do the rolling update on that, if you create suddenly 1,000 extra pods, things are not going to go well. What exactly will happen in that scenario? What, what would go wrong? Would it be like too much load on the control plane or whatever? Not exactly. Um, the, the problem in that case is that, you know, at, at that scale, most likely you are working with cluster auto-scaling. Uh, so what happens if you suddenly create like 1,000 new pods is that you have a sudden need of extra capacity. So the cluster autoscaler will kick in and create a bunch of nodes. It's going to provision a bunch of extra nodes. But the problem is you don't need these nodes long term. You only need them for a few minutes while you do your rolling update. So the nodes will come up. They will fill up with the new pods. And then we will shut down the old pods. And now you end up with a cluster that is very fragmented. You know, like ideally, you know, the, the, the perfect scenario is when all the nodes are uh, almost full, you know, at capacity uh, so that you don't pay for unused capacity. Now, imagine you have a bunch of nodes that are really, really dense, really packed, uh, really every resource is used perfectly. Now you create a bunch of nodes and you put a bunch of pods there and you delete a bunch of pods from the rest of the cluster you end up with a cluster that looks like uh, uh, you know, the, the cheese with holes. Uh, so you have a lot of nodes that are going to be half, 60%, 70% full, and you will end up paying for a lot of extra capacity for nothing. So that's why it's typically not a good idea to put max surge 100% on really big deployments because even if that sounds like at first it could be a good idea, like, yeah, we're going to release the new version really fast, um, in, in effect, it's going to um, make you pay for a lot of resources that you won't use. 
Um, all right. So by default, you know, like I was telling you that the default values here are 25%, 25%. Uh, one thing you can do is put max unavailable to zero so that there is no loss of capacity during a rolling update. And you could set uh, max surge to, it depends. <clears throat> it really depends on the kind of workload that you have. 10% um, would work well. 10 would work pretty well as, uh, as well, you know, just 10 pods. But it really depends, you know, do, do you have many small pods or a small number of big pods, etc. Um, now, just to be clear, if you, if you, you know, when you're just getting started with Kubernetes and you have very modest workloads, you don't need to worry about that. It's only when you start hitting really big workloads, you know, like um, either we're talking about hundreds of pods in a single deployment or uh, pods that are really big, you know, like more than 10 gigs of RAM and 10 core per pod, then you might want to start thinking about that. But otherwise, the default values will be plenty fine.